The other week, Deadpool and Wolverine finally came out. I finally saw it. And everybody who is anybody was satisfied. And it officially brought the Fox X-Men universe to a conclusion. A much better conclusion than Dark Phoenix, I might add. Uh, so let's go ahead and celebrate these movies one last time with a ranking from worst to best. And this should probably go without saying, spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine are all over the internet now with their free game. So there's going to be some spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine here. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started at number 14, easily the worst of these movies, and that is Dark Phoenix. This is a completely lazy and effortless uh, attempt at making a Dark Phoenix movie. It's a very weak conclusion for the X-Men franchise. I'm glad it is no longer the conclusion. Um, I do not like this movie. My full thoughts are in my review. It's just really bad. Number 13 and not much of a leap in quality in my opinion is New Mutants and I get that there's people out there who like this movie and more power to you if you like this movie I just don't care about it I thought it was lazy effortless and honestly kind of boring for the most part I didn't care for really any of the main characters um, they're not terrible by any means but I don't love them either like I did with a lot of the main characters of these other movies but um yeah this was really an afterthought of Fox and Disney acquisition so yeah I don't really care for this movie number 12 and taking a bit of a leap in quality is going to be X-Men The Last Stand and I know this movie is something that a lot of people have come around to over the years but I just personally still don't love it um, like some people do. Again, this is a big leap in quality from the last two entries, but there's still a lot of issues with it. They had too many stories going on at once. The performances were still great, especially from Hugh Jackman and uh, Famke Janssen and Ian McKellen, but there were too many stories going on. Uh, Cyclops was completely shafted in this movie. Um, it's kind of a mess, but it's still fun in a lot of parts. Number 11 is probably the most disappointing movie on this list, but it's still not terrible, and that is going to be X-Men Apocalypse. Um, I was very disappointed in this movie when I first saw it, and I continue to be disappointed in it. There's still a lot of good elements, uh, namely Michael Fassbender. He is fantastic here. Um, there's some really good action sequences, the Quicksilver scene is amazing, but again, there's too many plot lines going on. Apocalypse, who is the Thanos of the X-Men, is completely wasted. Um, Oscar Isaac as an actor is completely wasted as Apocalypse. A very disappointing movie, but still not absolutely terrible. Number 10 is probably my biggest guilty pleasure movie of all time. And that's going to be X-Men Origins Wolverine. I know, this movie is bad. But I have fun with it. Uh, Hugh Jackman and Liev Schreiber are fantastic here. Danny Houston is absolutely fantastic as Stryker. I really loved Kevin Durant as Blob. Even Taylor Kitsch as Gambit wasn't that bad. Obviously, the use of Deadpool in the end of the movie is an absolute war crime. But, I still have fun with this movie. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people say it is. But I will agree with people on the use of Deadpool. Absolutely terrible, unforgivable. But I still enjoy this movie, so it's right here. Number 9 is going to be the original X-Men. And this movie is fantastic. Um, it's not really one of the greatest of all time by today's standards, but along with Blade, we owe this movie a lot as Marvel fans. Um, obviously, Blade is what really kick-started 
um, the popularity of Marvel in film, but this movie also helped out quite a bit. Um, so I just really have a special place for it because of its historic value in Marvel history along with Blade and the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. I just really think it's a great introduction, um, a great starter movie to this franchise, so it's right here at number nine. Number eight is going to be Deadpool 2, um, a sequel that goes bigger, aims higher, and most of the time succeeds. There's a few issues here, I've addressed them in my review, but I still think that this is a fantastic sequel to Deadpool. I think that it's a great adventure for Deadpool. You get some great action sequences. Josh Brolin is a lot of fun as Cable um, in the year that he had a lot of roles um, that summer in 2018. But um, yeah, I really like Deadpool 2. Um, nowhere near as good as the first one, obviously. You'll see that one much higher on this list. You'll see Deadpool and Wolverine much higher on this list. But I do like Deadpool 2. I think it's a great sequel, and it's right here. Number 7 is going to be X2, X-Men United. And this, for the longest time, was considered one of the greatest comic book movie sequels of all time. And for damn good reason. You get a much bigger story, uh, bigger stakes, uh, much more complex villain not to say magneto isn't complex because he is but you get the the complex relationship between striker and wolverine and the whole mystery of wolverine's past uh it starts to come to light for him and i really really liked that because you get a really great exploration uh lady death strike uh played by kelly who great antagonist um i loved her fight with wolverine and I also really loved Alan Cumming as Nightcrawler. I really wish he'd come back for uh, The Last Stand. But regardless, I think that this is a fantastic movie. A great follow-up to the original. And so it's here at number seven. Number six is going to be honestly what feels like a forgotten movie by a lot of X-Men fans. And that is The Wolverine. Um, this really did feel like a, uh, a test run. For what James Mangold later did with Logan, but I still think that this is a fantastic, self-contained Wolverine story. It takes place, it picks up a few years after The Last Stand, so the events of that movie are still weighing heavily on Logan's mind. And I thought that it was a really great um, exploration of Wolverine's character post The Last Stand, and a really great uh, exploration of Japanese culture as well. Uh, Japan is one of my favorite countries. I love Japanese culture. So I love seeing Wolverine go to Japan. Um, the third act gets a little silly, yes, but I thought that this was a badass movie, great fight scenes, and one of Hugh Jackman's best performances. Kicking off the top five, at number five, we're going to have X-Men First Class. And this is the movie that this franchise needed at the time that it came out. This is the kick in the pants that they needed. Because X-Men Origins Wolverine failed to win over critics and audiences. So, yeah, this movie was definitely needed. Uh, Matthew Vaughn came in and pretty much saved this franchise from extinction. Um, gave us a great uh, origin story for both Professor Xavier and Magneto set in the 60s among the, amidst the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. And I thought it was a really great origin story. You get a fantastic villain played by Kevin Bacon. He's such a bastard in this movie, but... He's so good in the role. You just can't help but hate him. Um, Azazel is a really fun villain as well. And another thing that drags this movie down, though, is the use of Emma Frost. <laughs> everybody says that, and I agree with everybody there. The use of Emma Frost in this movie is not very good, but it's still not as bad as the use of Deadpool and Wolverine Origins, so there's that. Number four is going to be the new kid on the block. We got Deadpool and Wolverine, and this was such a satisfying movie. I love this movie to death. 
There's a couple jokes that don't exactly land, but it's still such a damn satisfying good time. Uh, so many good cameos. Um, first of all, gotta give credit, Wesley Snipes came back as Blade, and I loved every bit of that. Um, obviously, like I said earlier, the original Blade movie, we owe that movie a lot. Um, because that movie is pretty much what saved Marvel from bankruptcy. So, yeah, I love seeing him again. I love the references to his movies. And um, another one, the other cameo I referenced in my review that I was very happy about. We finally got to see Channing Tatum play Gambit. And he was fantastic. Um, I was a little doubtful of his casting at first, uh, to be quite honest. Um, I never disliked Channing Tatum, but I just never really saw him as Gambit. But he absolutely stole the show in this movie. That scene where they're um, uh, fighting uh, Cassandra Nova's army and he just gets the cards and he stretches them out and starts throwing them. Absolutely fantastic. I love Gambit. Love to see Gambit. Um, I just spent like two minutes talking about Gambit. But... Um, this is a fantastic movie. Great character arcs for both Deadpool and Wolverine. A great return for Hugh Jackman after uh, the ending of Logan. And I love the opening sequence of this movie as well. Um, if you've seen it, you've seen it. But yeah, great movie. Great uh, conclusion to the Fox franchise. And a really great send-off and love letter as well. Um, there's a whole sequence in the credits where they show behind the scenes footage of uh, just about every Fox Marvel movie uh, set to um, Good Riddance by Green Day and that's actually one of my favorite songs of all time. It's a really great tribute. I love that whole sequence. So Deadpool and Wolverine number four. It's a great movie. Number three is going to be the first Deadpool and this is still my favorite Deadpool movie. As much as I love Deadpool and Wolverine, this is still the best one in my opinion. Um, really great to see Ryan Reynolds get to play this character um, after he wanted to for so long and every roadblock came up, but I loved him in this role and I love this movie. I love the whole self-contained story. It's a, my, pretty much just a revenge thriller, but I really, really liked what they did here. So, yeah, it's a great movie. It's a 10 out of 10 movie. There's only three movies that have a 10 out of 10. It's these top three. But I love Deadpool. It's a great film. It's a great introduction to the character after Wolverine Origins neutered him. <laughs> but um, regardless, great movie. Love it to death. Our runner-up, number two. And I really flip-flopped on these top two. Um... You can really ask me any day, and my answer might change. But as of right now, number two is going to be Logan. And I know, I know, this is a lot of people's favorite. And it's a great movie. I just like my top one a little bit more. But Logan is a fantastic movie, a great send-off to Hugh Jackman's uh, current version of Wolverine at the time. Um, I just thought it was funny that Hugh Jackman had aged so well, as had Patrick Stewart, that they had to use makeup to make them look older than they actually were. But, uh, I really love this movie. Great performance from Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. Daphne Keene is absolutely fantastic as Laura in this movie. Um, great to see her back in Deadpool and Wolverine as well. Uh, I'm gonna add that. But I really liked this movie. I thought it was a great send-off, like I said. Great action scenes and a much more emotional story um, than I thought it would be. But uh, yeah, love this movie. Great neo-western type. Fantastic. Love it to death. But number one, and it's really hard with these top two, like I said. But my number one for 10 years has still remained X-Men Days of Future Past. I love everything about this movie. This is 
X-Men personified. Um, everything about this movie is just pure X-Men. Uh, you get great performances from everybody. Hugh Jackman, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. Everybody's fantastic here. You get great stakes with the Sentinels. Great action sets, especially in the third act. I just love everything about this movie. It's a great movie and a great reset for the timeline as well at the time. Um... Yeah, I love this movie to death. There's no doubt it is my number one. Even ten years later, it has remained my number one. And, well, now it probably always will be. Unless you catch me on a different day where Logan's my favorite. But, as of right now, this is absolutely my favorite. So that's my ranking of all the X-Men films that we've gotten. Let me know down in the comments what your ranking is, which one's your favorite, which one's your least favorite. Um, I'd love to hear from you, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.